everybody so here is the controls demo in case you missed it so let's get started so here's what the finalized um control setup we talked about in class looks like so we're going to work backwards so what we're going to do is we're going to build an aim constraint control for the eyeball and have it have an offset it's as if this was a goggle but we'll actually build it like a goggle and then the jaw and then the head space. So that's what we're gonna build today. And let's get started. So first things first, let's delete what we don't need and double check our constraints that they're all gone. Okay, there's a couple scripts we talked about in class um, that are important. So I'll show you where you can find those. So this is the CS252 mimic folder, TA resources, scripts, then we have the control rigging group generator, the mimic rig hierarchy generator, and the Spain curve creator. Uh, the mimic one will just create this automatic grouping system with rigging systems, controls, and stuff. It's a quick and easy hierarchy for you. Uh, but everything else, you will need to download and open them in your script editor. So uh, I'm going to open this. This is the Spain's curve creator, um, but we also are gonna save this to the shelf as well. Um, I am, we'll save it to my rigging shelf. So we're gonna do file save as, we'll call this, we'll call this controls. And then it creates a button that will then, every time I click this button, the script will automatically launch for me. And we are going to do this also for my other one as well. Okay. A new file, save script. And we'll call this, we'll call this just pad. Okay. And in case you ever need to edit thing, you can go edit, edit. So you can edit the actual code or how it kind of looks on the shelves. So we'll call, uh, we'll do DE, do DEECC for the Spain curve creators, so kind of know shorthand what those are. Okay, now we are ready to get going um, to create our controls. So I'm gonna do the first one. We're gonna use the Spain's tool here and create an octagon. We're gonna make it yellow. And we're going to name this head. We're going to call the group control. And um, he has some offsets where if you have a joint selected, it will create the curve according to what your selection. So we're just doing it, no selection in our viewport. So immediately it can create the curve we need. Okay, we hit apply. There it is. Now our curve, he's facing the wrong way. I want to have my axis a different way. So we're gonna do a negative 90 degree rotation. And we're also gonna scale this up so that it can compass the whole head. So in a lot of ways, most of your rigs will need a world control like this at zero, zero, zero. So this will allow you to move your rig in world space and everything. Um, it's like the master control or the world control or a couple different names that professional rigs have them under. And we are also gonna rotate this 180 degrees. Why? So that my axes are pointing the correct way. I want them to. Uh, Cause if I didn't have that 180, when I would go to the head, my X axis is going this way this is positive Y, and this is a Z up. So we're going to do negative 180, have everything right. So you can have this um, control group. We're going to give the name offset because that's the part of the naming convention that I have set for the class. And you can see our naming convention here in our class folder, TA resources, documents, and the naming conventions. Um, so the biggest ones you'll have to worry about are pads, offsets, and just your main control. SDK, we'll get to that, um, but most of you will just need a pad and an offset. So the pad 
um, is to catch everything that you don't need. Or we'll, we'll get into it. I'll explain it in a moment. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so we have our control set up where we want to go. If you want, you can freeze all these controls. So either clicking the snowflake button or going to modify, freeze transformations. I'm just checking everything's right and hit apply. So then it set my axis and everything to the way it needs to be and we're good to go. So if you freeze controls or uh, any uh, freeze transforms, that's the word I'm looking for, on any group above, it will also freeze those for below. So say I had this offset like that, then I froze it, or then I had an offset here too. Then I froze the group above. It also freezes everything below. So do keep that in mind that it takes into account your hierarchy when freezing. Okay, so that's the Spain's curve creator. So thank you to Spain for giving that to us or giving it to the program. Um, and we are going to create a curve for the jaw here so that we can get a jaw rotation and be able to animate. Because animators, they're always supposed to animate on controls, never on the geometry, never on the rig, because problems. So I'm going to go to my curve slash surfaces, click the circle, and we're going to scale it up. And I just going to scale it up. So we're going to name this jaw control. And we're also going to rename this head one as head control. So we have our jaw control. Scale it up. I'm going to freeze my transforms. Then I'm going to group this. So it's here at zero, zero. We're not going to move it yet. We're going to group it and name this jaw control offset. So now we want this control to be in a line with this jaw, the same angle, so that as the animator is using it, they can understand how it's supposed to move inherently. So I'm not going to move my curve here because uh, we want all these values to stay zero, 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 and the pivot to stay where we currently have it. We are just going to move the control. So I'm going to move him up, and I'm going to jump to my side view here. Turn off wireframe, wireframe shaded, sorry. And then I'm going to rotate it so that that angle matches pretty near exactly where I want it. And I'm going to do a little bit of moving. Perfect. So this curve now is in a line with the jaw, uh, but we're not done yet. So we're going to change the color of the curve. So I just went to my attribute editor, object display, drawing overrides. Enable overrides. Then we're going to set the color. We're going to be magenta. Or actually, there's a bright red in here. So let's find the bright red right there. So we have a red. Perfect. OK, so now we're also going to make sure. So we don't want our rotation value happening here in the middle. We want it to happen right on the jaw joint, because that's what we would expect from a jaw. We're meant to rotate at its hinge. And our control is a little not the shape we want it to. So first, we're going to right click, going to control vertex, and I'm going to turn my symmetry on for object X. And so now that will select both sides. And I'm just going to move these points to kind of be a little bit closer to that draw. So he's wearing a nice pair of headgear here. Perfect. And now we need to set the pivot of this control. So I'm on the control here. I'm not on my group above my offset group. This is all on the control. We're going to change the pivot for this control to be on that joint. So I'm hitting Alt 2 behind my geometry and then my D key or insert key to be able to edit your pivot. And I'm going to hold down V to snap to points. And we're just going to snap it right there on that draw. Hit my D key again, Alt 2 to bring back my geometry. And we are looking dandy and good. Sweet. OK, so now we are going to select the control, not the group. And then we're going to, because we want the control that the animator is going to use then to drive this jaw joint. So control, then jaw. We go to rigging and parent constraint. And now when I move this control, 
The jaw will move the way that we need it. Perfect. Sweet. Okay. Now we also want, um, ah, here we go. We also want this head joint to move and to follow or to move the jaw joint. So we're going to nest it. And here's an example why um, we need a pad. So generally, as a rigger, it's really smart to keep different groups as clean as possible. So when I look at this group offset, I know it's up Y by a certain degree, Z, and rotate. Now I could drag this and parent constraint it right under, but see how all these values suddenly change. So my math now, if I have to make any adjustments, is a lot more complicated than it was before. Generally, we want to keep it as clean as possible. So this is where pads or null groups is another name is really helpful. So I'm just going to group it and it doesn't matter where the pivot on this is, uh, but I'm just going to make it the center pivot or you can do modify center pivot. And we're going to name this jaw control uh, pad. So now see how this uh, hip has values in Y. So if I was to parent it underneath, those values will translate to the pad, but they don't mess up my offset values. So everything's a lot cleaner. So this is why we always make sure when you're nesting controls into things, you want a pad. You're always going to need an offset. Never, there's very few occasions where you would have controls and controls. You're always going to have an offset. Most of the time you're going to have a pad. So it's best to make practice with both of them. Okay, let's pull this out and zero out these values. And now we're going to bring them in. So now when I move the head, it does everything that we want. Okay, now let's also select the head control and the head joint and just do a quick constraint and we are good to go. So now the head will move everything we need. Hey, okay. So, we are just going to nest this right under this control group here, and we are good to go. So now our outliner is clean. Okay, let's build a, a another control for the eye here. So we're going to do, I'm going to do, uh, I'm trying to remember all the examples I did in class. So let's first open to Spain's tool again. And let's create, we'll do a square. And we're going to call this uh, eyes control. And we're going to make it blue. Hit apply. Okay. It created our square. It's not the exact shape that I want. So I'm going to rotate it negative 45 degrees. And just scaling the group, we're going to make it larger. And we're going to freeze it. Then we're going to adjust some more shapes. Perfect. And then we're going to freeze it again. So we, awesome. Okay, so now. This is going to be our main eye control. So if you had two eyes, as I would move this, both eyes would follow. And we're also going to build a natural offset for just a single eye. And that single eye will control the aim constraint and everything in this eyeball. So we're going to create a curve. So I'm not using the Spain's tool this time. We're just doing it by hand. We're going to name this right eyeball control. And we're going to change that. See, I'm going to group it. And we're going to name this one offset. Okay. 
So fun thing. So if we drop this into here, so if I automatically parent this offset group into the control, but first we're going to create a pad. So we're going to need a pad because we're going to nest it. And I'm just copying and pasting the names here really quickly, change it. So we're going to bring it in. And it already puts in some values because this box has translated up 13 to 13 and then over by 15. So even though our eye control doesn't have any, that information still needs to be there. So Maya's like counter translating in a way for it to say at origin. So I'm going to hit the zero and it will immediately pop to where this first offset is. It's very helpful. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to jump to our front view and position it. We're going to keep this pad actually uh, zero, zero. So I'm going to go to the offset now and we're going to position this eye ball where we need. It's 90, 90 degree rotation. And we're going to scale it up and position it about, actually we want this to be about the center of the eye. So right, right there, roughly. Perfect. And we're going to color it too. So you can actually color things with the Spain's tool. Bring up the Spain. And we're going to make this be, we'll do another yellow and hit apply color. So there, automatically set our enable overrides over here using his tool. It just exposed those values to you very nicely. Okay, perfect. So now we have our eyeball ready to go. So as an animator translates it, uh, this way it would be Z, or X, Z, and Y. So now we're going to select the control of the eye. So none of the groups or anything. We're selecting the control. Then we're going to select the joint of the eye. And, oh, we're going to zero this out real quick. Here we go. Because that was just a leftover of deleting the old aim constraint. It'll keep those values on there. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I control on the joint. I'm just going to reset my tool and hit apply. Actually, we're going to check maintain offset and hit apply. So it won't move. And now the eye will aim wherever this circle is. So if it's out here way far over. Everything's good. But now as an animator, you can move the whole control. So there could be, uh, you could have multiple eyes and stuff here. Uh, sorry if you hear my roommates talking, I'm recording a Zoom right now. And so then everything can move accordingly. So then an animator can then do the offset that they need. Sweet. Okay, one last thing. We're going to create a new group and we're going to center this. Modify, center pivot. And we're going to control copy, hit pad. Now, why we're doing this is so that as we move the head, this eye will follow us. And because we don't want to nest everything under stuff, it can get really confusing for an animator when they select things and everything turns green. So this is where constraints will show up a lot in your rig too, is getting your controls to follow what they need. So I'm selecting the head control here. So I have head control selected. We're going to select the pad of the eyes control. And then we're going to go to our rigging tab and hit constrain. And now when the head moves, that eye will move as well. And everything is set up and ready to go. So here is your controls demo. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and if you have questions, reach out.